Hey all, Nicholas DeMario of SterlingKisses.com here, and today I have a new castable resin for review. This is Jane He's High Wax Plus Castable Resin. They were kind enough to send me a bottle for review, so let's take a look at it. The bottle has a few recommended settings printed on the label, as well as the usual precautions you should take while using 3D printer resins. This castable resin is made up of 60% wax, so of special note is the recommended printing temperature of 25 to 30 degrees Celsius, that's 77 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm working in a colder climate, so I warm the bottle in hot water before pouring it into the vat. The resin should be shaken well before use. This of course introduces air bubbles. I drag them to the edge of the vat to help them pop so they don't affect the print. I also warm the build plate with a hair dryer just before starting the print to ensure good adhesion. For this first print, I selected a variety of my usual designs. These are being printed on an Elegoo Saturn III Ultra with NFEP film for the VAT. By the way, I'll have a review of this printer in an upcoming video. A few hours later, the prints are done. Unfortunately, a couple of them did not stick to the build plate. As I removed the successful prints, I found that most of the pieces that adhered to the platform did so quite well though there were a couple that were barely hanging on. Cleaning the tray revealed the failed prints that stuck to the film, though it was more like a suction cup effect. I believe the issue here was that my pieces were all supported by a large raft at their base, so this larger surface area was more prone to stick like a suction cup to the film. I made a couple of changes to help solve this. The first was to increase the bottom exposure time by a couple of seconds. Next, I used this hexagon pattern as a base layer instead of the typical raft shape. This reduces the surface area for the bottom layer and should reduce the peel forces that were pulling the prints off the build plate. I'll provide a link for this hex grid in the comments. This time, everything came out perfect. And here's a look at my Chidu box settings. Once removed from the platform, the prints are cleaned in isopropyl alcohol and dried with an air compressor. After drying, I noticed some white splotching on the prints, but this is normal and did not seem to affect the quality of the surface or the casting. After doing a few more prints, I found I didn't need to use large custom supports. I was able to get away with using Chidubox's default support settings which left smaller contact points on the print. Oftentimes I used medium supports instead of heavy. Another advantage I found is that the prints were very durable. I was able to confidently cut free supports without worrying too much about something being too brittle and breaking. With the supports cut free, the prints were then submerged in tap water and cured under UV light for one minute on each side. The curing process removed the white surface discoloration, making it easier to see the details of the print. The prints were then attached to a wax sprue tree and placed in a flask for investing.
I'm using Prestige Optima Investment mixed at a 38 to 100 ratio. The flasks are placed in a vacuum chamber to remove any trapped air bubbles. They are then left to dry overnight. The next morning, I place them into a kiln to burn out the resin. I basically followed Jan Key's recommended burnout cycle, but reduced the time since I'm using smaller flasks. Here's a look at my schedule for those interested. These pieces are being cast in sterling silver. Half of it is scrap, and half from fresh casting grain. A little over six hours later, and it's time to cast. And the results are very impressive. The resin burnt away cleanly, leaving no ash residue, and I didn't experience any investment breakaway around sharp details. Unfortunately, I had a few grow lines on some prints that I didn't notice until after casting. This only affected one print session, and they only show up on the bottom half of the print. My settings didn't change from other print sessions that came out perfect, and the only other variable was temperature so I think this highlights the importance of using this resin in a warm environment. I kept experimenting with the resin, and this time I wanted to try something larger. These dare sculptures were printed solid and are quite heavy by jewelry standards. The same investing and burnout procedure was followed, aside from adding an extra hour to my initial ramp time and two additional hours before holding the high burnout temperature to make sure these large pieces fully burnt out. They were then cast in sterling silver. After the investment was removed, I was happy to see that this pair of silver deer looked perfect. Everything was then cut free, tumbled, cleaned up, and polished. I have this beautiful specimen of amethyst with some quartz in it that I wanted to use as a base for the deer. A small hole was drilled for each, and they were then epoxied in place to complete the scene. This new High Wax Plus resin by Jan He has proven to be another useful addition to the shop. Once the settings were dialed in, it was very reliable to print, and casting was very straightforward. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope you'll check back soon to see my review of the Elegoo Saturn III Ultra. Until then, I'm Nicholas DeMario of SterlingKisses.com. Thanks for watching.